Hey, I'm going to walk you through how to use Flux Copilot to go from idea to fully manufacturable hardware. No friction, no guesswork. Flux Copilot is the new way to build electronics, faster, clearer, and way more collaborative. It's designed to support every stage of your design journey, architecture, component research, schematic capture, layout, and final review. Here's how we'll break it down. For architecture, we'll use Copilot almost like a product team, brainstorming features and trade-offs. In part research, we'll explore circuit blocks, sensors, ICs, comparing components and configurations. In schematic, we'll extract values, calculate parameters, and pull in datasheet data directly through Copilot. Then we'll switch to PCB view and do some light placement, create net classes, and use Copilot auto layout to route the board. Finally, we'll resolve any design rule issues or AI review flags before we send the board off for manufacturing. Let me show you what that actually looks like. Let's say I want to start by building a smart humidity sensor. The first thing I'll do is prompt Copilot for an architecture. Copilot can start with a very basic prompt, but to get to solutions that meet all your requirements the fastest, it's best to provide more details up front. Once Copilot gets the initial input, it usually follows up with a few questions, just like a teammate would. It's trying to close any knowledge gaps before proposing a solution. From there, Copilot will generate a block diagram. It'll also tell me what assumptions it made, so I can quickly tweak them if needed. For this project, it initially suggested a compact, low-power microcontroller, but I know I'll need USB-C and both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I just mentioned those requirements and Copilot updates the system diagram. Now that I've got the high-level architecture, it's time to pick actual components. As you can see here, I've already placed the microcontroller and analog humidity sensor, two of the most important blocks in the design. I still need a buffer and a basic filter, so I'm looking for a low noise op amp. Copilot pulls its data from both data sheets and general technical knowledge. So if I say, find a family of op amps with a gain bandwidth over 10 megahertz, it returns real candidates, not just generic suggestions. Once I've got a few options, I can ask Copilot to pare them down and provide MPNs. Then I'll ask Copilot to compare them based on their data sheets, looking at things like input voltage range, quiescent current, and protection features. Once I've picked the best one, I just ask Copilot to add it for me. Now that my major components are in place, it's time to wire things up. This works best when I keep the prompts focused and specific. For example, connect the SPI interface between the MCU and the sensor, or wire the power rail from the USB-C input to the PMIC and microcontroller. Copilot handles connections based on the pin mappings and namings. If it's a simple number of connections, I usually just connect them myself. Once the core connections are made, I usually ask, what else do I need to make the MCU work properly? Copilot might come back with decoupling capacitors, a bolt cap, maybe a ferret bead. It'll source these suggestions straight from the data sheet. Then it can place these parts in the schematic and I can adjust their positioning. Once everything looks good, it's time to switch to PCB layout. Now that I'm in PCB view, this is where I get the board ready for manufacturing. I usually start by setting up the board's outline, stack up, and adding any cutouts or mounting holes. This gives me a physical foundation to work from. Then I'll begin placing components. I tend to do this manually to get the exact layout I want. But if I ever feel stuck, like figuring out how to separate analog from digital domains, I'll just describe the situation and ask Copilot for advice. That said, it's important to know right now, Copilot chat does not have full context on component positioning or PCB routing. It only knows what's in the schematic. The one exception is that it does have context from design review tab, which we'll use later. Once placement feels right, I'll set up my rule sets. This is where I create my net classes for power, signals, and high speed lines, and constrain them to meet electrical and manufacturing requirements. After that, I'm ready to route. I typically hand route critical nets first, like high-speed signals, sensitive analog paths, or power traces, just to make sure that they're clean and well isolated. Then I click the auto layout button at the bottom of the screen. This launches Copilot auto layout, which starts routing the rest of the board. Before it kicks off, I check the system check dropdown to see if there's anything I need to adjust, missing constraints, conflicting net classes, that kind of thing. Once it starts, I can either select an early version and begin iterating, or let Copilot generate more options and converge on the best result. 
After layout, I jump into the review tab. Copilot can check for design rule violations, flag common mistakes, and offer suggestions for improving manufacturability. If I've missed something, like a missing pull-up or an unconnected net, it'll let me know before I send the board for manufacturing. And that's the full Copilot loop. You describe what you're building, Copilot does the heavy lifting for you, step by step. Whether you're new to hardware or just want to move faster, this is the new way to design. Now start creating with your first prompt.